Hello, Netta Barzi Live. Welcome. Welcome. Hi, Jessica. How are you? Uh, I am good on this very rainy day. I'm in Jerusalem. It's raining here. Is it raining by you? Are you in Tel Aviv? It's, it has been raining all night. Right now we have like uh, uh, a really nice pause. Uh, I can see that through the window near me. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm not it's boring. A kind of uh, a kind of scene. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, we, yeah, it's starting again. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hanukkah Sameach. I love winter. I love winter so much, especially you do? winter. It's like, uh, um, it's like um, uh, washing. Cleansing. Cleansing, yeah, cleansing everything, and uh, and and you can wear big stuff, and you can be very, <laughs> and uh, you can cuddle. I I just hate summer. I hate uh, I hate sweating and smelling. Uh, and and I kind of like that winter is more like an inner kind of yes. season, uh, and and everybody's like looking in. It's like an opportunity to do that. And uh, especially this winter. Right? And the dissonance between like a summer and and the quarantine was uh, was harsh. It's yeah. really yeah. unusual to have a pandemic while it's winter. <laughs> I don't know how it hey. sounds. <laughs> to me, it's like, okay, <laughs> it's like just better. Okay, I, I do understand what you're saying. It does make sense, especially... Chanukah inside, light the Chanukiah, eat some sufganiyot and livivot, eat some lafkas, right? Do like, those kinds of things inside, inside. Inside. So, inside. So, Netta, we are very happy to have you on Times of Israel behind the headlines where we get to speak to fascinating personalities like yourself and what you're up to. Um the first question I've got to ask you is, and I've been I've been watching this to all our viewers. There's something Netta has been doing called Netta's Office on YouTube, and it's a great little snapshot of things that are going on in Netta's head, things that she's thinking about and singing and talking about. And what I've been wondering is, where is this English from? This wonderful dissonance. Where do you are you like many Israelis of your age that you watched? a lot of TV and read the subtitles. What's your story? What's your, what's your English language spoken story? I, 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 it's a combination of what you said and uh, the fact that I actually grew up in Nigeria. Uh, and I was like uh, um, uh, an infant, uh, my father flew there for work and, uh, and I grew up in an international school. So. Uh, first thing I got was my English, and the second thing I got was music. There was like a, both uh, uh, two uh, principals um, uh, of uh, like headmasters of the school, um, right. and Mr. and Mrs. Jackson. Mr. Jackson <laughs> had a guitar, and Mrs. Jackson she had a tambourine, and every morning they would sing us one of. Uh, uh, of many American songs of the Beatles, Michael Jackson. Uh, so oh. kind of grew up uh, listening to music, like learning through music. It was very right. interesting right. Uh, doing that. And uh, when we came back to Israel, when I was about seven, uh, um, my mother was uh, was a very Jewish mother, and she uh, uh, decided to take me to uh, um, English Music class. English ah. class. So uh, I was like, after after he after school, she would like put me in two or three hours like English uh, with an English tutor. So. Uh, that is why. <laughs> that is she did why not I, want you to. I have to give this credit to my mom. Uh, <laughs> she saved my career <laughs> when I was very little, and uh, and uh, this is me thanking her. <laughs> We're happy to thank Netsa's mother. Thank you, Netsa's mother. Um, and then, so I've i of course heard about the Nigeria experience, and that makes a lot of sense. Why English? 
became a language that you're fluent in. And but then so the, but then your brothers are also musicians. So everyone caught the music bug while you were in Nigeria or your house was a musical house. Nobody actually knows because uh, um, <laughs> my grandfather is Moroccan and he could also sing very, very well. And, uh, and my grandma uh, from, from my father's side, she knew how to play each and every instrument that she was never taught. Uh, music wasn't a thing that people allowed themselves to pursue uh, ever. So I, I don't quite know that they all had like semi talents hidden and undeveloped. <laughs> uh, but ever since like my brother started drumming, I knew I wanted to pursue music after him and my little brother knew he wanted to pursue music after me. And it's like, it's kind of a family thing when the, when the older brother starts and when someone starts doing it, everybody wants to join in. Yeah, right. That makes sense. That makes sense. Wait, and one's a rapper and one's and one's the jazz guy, right? Isn't well, that the one is, division? One is a drummer for the rap scene. You kind of <laughs> got it. Right? Okay. Uh, uh, and one is a jazz man. Yeah. My my little brother p plays uh the contrabass. And oh, wow. my big brother is a hip hop drummer. Yeah. One of the big ones okay. in the the oh, great you guys had a, you guys had a great performance at the Israel Festival in September uh -huh. and it was uh, it was a real treat for those of us who you know it's always fun to see a family of performers and to see siblings play together so okay now it's something I've wondered about since I've started writing about you with your at the when you won Hakokav Haba which is the reality show that sends the Israeli contestant to Eurovision. I wondered, having interviewed a lot of a lot of vocalists, um, I think there's probably a moment. And you went to the Ramon School, which is a very prestigious music school here in Israel. Is there a moment where you say, "What kind of singer am I going to be?" Meaning, you are the singer that you are, but there's ways of finding your stage, right? There's going the indie route. There's going the jazz route. There's going the reality show route. Is, was that part of your decision-making process? Tell us a little bit about the history of what brought you to Hakokav Haba and then Eurovision, wow. if you don't mind sharing that with wow. us. Okay, um, that's very. It's a very interesting uh, way of like uh, uh, of saying this, of of asking this question because I, I was asked like similar ones. Uh, all along, but this is like a different, uh, a different angle to it uh, about like the route uh, of of which you choose to to go in. I was always in to taking time and finding myself. Uh, I went and spent a year in Ramon, and I decided to do uh, not a singer's um, uh, degree. regular study degree. Mm -hmm. I decided. To, uh, an electronic music producer degree so uh, right. yeah yeah I didn't want anyone to know and I didn't want I didn't want my talent like standing in my way I knew I I knew I knew how to sing but I I wanted to know how do I how am I not depending on other people uh, to to create mm -hmm. music I felt always like I need someone else like I need uh, a, a producer I need someone to tell me that I'm good I need someone to tell me how to sing I I was sick of it you know and I was uh I was kind of you know searching uh of independence uh of, of ways to do uh, my own thing and I I studied there and meanwhile I I studied for a year, I did a lot of jam sessions uh, in Tel Aviv uh, twice a week. It was like going to a gym for regular people. <laughs> for me, that was it, like a, a, a 2 a.m. gym. Uh, I, I went great. every single night. I figured out what a crowd likes, how mm -hmm. the looser you get with your mind the better performer you are, 
the 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 more that people are enthusiastic about you, uh, uh, the 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 sharper you get with with like, like the division of the players, like what 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 does every player has to do? What the guitarist has to do? I knew everything. I knew any everything about managing a band, and quickly enough, I was managing these nights, uh, and it was uh, an amazing school for me. Uh, for ever, for for music, for how how do I want a track to sound like? How do I want my band to sound like? Uh, uh, all the beats were already in my head, and uh, yeah. and everything was I, I I like I learned through these jams. How do I want my music to sound like? And um, and and what exactly are the sounds? So uh, I found out. Um, about a two amazing musicians, drummer and a bass player. And I decided to bring to life a project with them called The Experiment, which what we did was we came into a bar everywhere in Israel, we toured. We sold tickets, a lot of them, and we didn't prepare anything. We would just go on stage, and I would just improvise songs from scratch, uh, and people would would say wow. stuff. people would say associations. I would like go down from the stage, and I would eat like fries out of the crowd's table. <laughs> talk to them, and and it was like a cabaret. I didn't know that that wow. was what I was doing, but this is what I was doing. So. After all this, uh, I found my producer, my, my partner uh, for music making. His name is Avshalom. And, uh, and I decided that I am learning from him more than I am learning in Ramon. So I left Ramon. Um, and that happens sometimes. I very quickly understood that I'm not making any money. So I, 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 I like doing my thing. So I started uh, looking for some other stuff to do. I started singing in weddings, but that wasn't like, you know, fruitful enough. They didn't pay hands need. I just, I, I started looking for a job as a backup singer, but nobody wanted me as a backup singer. <laughs> I, I, I was crazy. Like, I heard, I heard a lot of like, you're too much. <laughs> and you're like, um, and, it's not going to work for me because, you know, I, I tried to be a singer in theater. That was also uh, um, a, a no. A bust. No. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, and it kind of gave me the, this, this. Confidence? This, not, not confidence. This, like, this, this fact that I know that mm. if I don't go big, if I don't try it big, it, it cannot happen. So uh, my mother called me the other day and she was telling me that she cannot help me anymore with rent. I'm 25. And I should... This is, this is back then. This yeah. is back then. I should yeah. come back home and maybe study <laughs> profession. Uh, maybe be a teacher. You're very good with kids, Neta. Uh -huh. which, which I am. I, I, I love kids. <laughs> I, I can see you being good with kids. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and I just, I was just out of options. I was like living the best life. <laughs> I was doing music from morning till night, but I wasn't making any money. Um, I was very, very independent this is like the whole thing that's leading me. Like the, the fact that I don't answer to anyone. I have this character of mine. And I've been getting these calls from the reality TV shows for quite a while. Uh, and I, at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I always thought that wasn't the route for me because I was very independent and I didn't want anything or anyone to tell me and put me in this so here's the new Adele. I, I was like hearing it already, okay? Like, yeah, she's fat and she's white and she can sing. Okay, big mama. I was hearing it in my head 
and I I wasn't gonna let this happen to me. So I didn't I didn't want to go because I didn't uh, want to be put in this tiny box. Box. And uh, and then uh, I figured out that if I if I go with a the looper, then uh, no one can touch my arrangements and no one can touch my identity, my musical identity. And wait, so Neta, that's when you started the looper then? Mm -hmm. ah. Like I started it before because, because I, I never knew how to play, but I decided to go with the looper to a music show. And, uh, and as, as a protecting shield, because I knew that the minute that I was going to be in their hands with just my voice, I am going to be like Plato. And I didn't want to be Plato for them. Mm -hmm. uh, I found instead of like TV people, I found partners uh, wow. to make history in, uh, in, in, in Israeli television and reality television, it was actually, it was, it felt like I was making art on prime time. We were making art wow. on prime time. They were putting like really, really new and edgy stuff. We, we are used to take, to take stuff from American TV and right. like educate them. Like, okay, she's the Israeli Adele. He's the Israeli Justin Bieber. She's the Israeli Katy Perry. We're, we're doing that. It was actually, right. we're doing that. And, and then I came with my box and my agenda and it was like nothing. And people didn't know how to take it. The, right. the TV station, they took responsibility of communicating me and my ideas into Two. heads. It was nothing like they ever saw. And it was nothing like I ever did. It was nothing like they <laughs> ever did. And it, it was magical. I, it was one of wow. like, I had, I had full control of how I looked. It was, no one has this privilege. No one. It was epic. And, uh, wow. and, and this is how, this is why I agreed to do this. And uh, I, am, I, I don't think that when you say the reality route, you mean this. Because this, is what, this wasn't a compromise. Is what, it was like a, a very, um, uh, very thoughtful choice of, of career. It was like, yeah. I'm not doing the reality route. I'm doing the meta route. I'm, I'm, sh I'm going to take the biggest platform for, for music, which people are disrespecting. And I am going to show everyone that you can do something really special. You can break yeah. the box. And, and this is what I did. I, I broke my own box and I broke everybody's <laughs> box. And, and it was, it was pretty awesome. Since, since, since then, a lot of eccentric people have been coming to reality and, and, uh, and now, and, and it's, and it's now understood that it's like the biggest stage. Uh, and, and that you can create, that you can have mainstream, and the main, mainstream kind of changed here. After that, yeah, pop, I would say so. Pop became very, uh, uh, it, it became alternative. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So Netta, you know, a lot of our audience is. We have a lot of audience in Europe. We also have a lot of audience in America, who and you know, Americans they don't know so much about Eurovision. We we did our best to try to explain to them what Eurovision is and what it can mean. And it's, of course when you won Eurovision and then when you brought Eurovision to Israel the following year in 2018, um, it did a lot to explain what this music festival is and what it can do. Uh, what was it like for you though? I mean, it's hard to sum up a couple of years experience in a few minutes, I know. 
But what you went on, so you took this stage and you made it yours. And then you went on to win. And then you went on to win Eurovision for Israel. And then you went on to bring Eurovision to Israel. What was what was that like for you? What What's that experience like for someone who is, who was at the very beginning of her musical path? Which, yeah. You know, you're, you're young. So you are at the beginning. What was that like for you? Eurovision wasn't ever my... my my dream i'm i'm right. not a not a competitive person i didn't uh see myself competing other people uh right. i didn't see myself representing my country or representing anyone yeah. i always saw uh i knew what i felt was right always i have a very strong intuition um uh, and I had a very strong set of um, set of standards, and yeah. and like I, I was raised by like very strong women. My grandfather, my my grandmother was like an amazing entrepreneur, and my mother is like very high uh, on Teva, uh, uh, the pharmaceutical company. She was like sitting mm-hmm. with tables and tables of men, bossing them around. So I, I grew up with very strong women um, around me. So it allowed me uh, to, uh, to just, you know, be myself and, and speak my mind. Uh, and when you do that, you accidentally inspire other people. <laughs> so, so people saw me as this thing that I, I, I said, okay. <laughs> Like uh, representing Israel, representing like uh, bullied children. Repre- I, I was just, you know, speaking out of my heart. Yeah. I realized very quickly that I can't have control on everything. And this is bigger than me. The first yeah. time after I finished a reality show, which was all about me. And then like, you know, I was... Nada, you're gonna go to Eurovision, and then was like, so okay, so why why is it good for me? <laughs> I I don't wanna like I I didn't want to go to Eurovision. I didn't saw mm-hmm. like a, an artistic interest in this in this competition. And then I and then I heard a toy, and it was like, th- th- come on, like why do I need this female empowerment? I didn't need it. I didn't thought I needed it. Yeah, uh, uh, because I was I was raised empowered. <laughs> You know, right? And uh, you didn't need more and, of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, always when I when I was singing, I I could gain friends, but uh, but I never saw myself making an impact. I was always, you know, I wasn't a social leader ever. I I I didn't recognize this this thing, this this like the fact that you are. That what you say and what you do and what you sing can change someone's life. I didn't mm-hmm. know th- that it was possible because I was always rejected with my opinions and my, and it was like okay, I I don't I I I was rejected until that point that I I didn't care anymore for what other people thought. Right. I didn't care anymore for what other people. Th- thought about me or or felt mm-hmm. about me because it was mostly negative and I didn't want to feel that um, but when you know I did I did toy and and girls were running after me in the street crying telling me and asking for advice about how do they deal with their lives I I was wow. You know, I was calling Doron Madali, the writer, and I was telling him, yeah. what did you do? Like, what is this? <laughs> and what is this thing you've created? What is this thing? Wow. And and he he like he saw this opportunity, he saw this, he saw my power and you and he and he enhanced it. And right. it was uh, it was It was crazy to realize how many lives have been touched 
and changed and 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 minds were were all of a sudden transformed <laughs> and uh, and it yeah. was it was bigger than me i was like no yeah. i'm a part of something bigger because yeah. every musician and every you know it's very different every musician and every uh, uh and every artist you know it's it's they're they're doing their 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 i thing their me thing yeah. they're 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 spilling their guts out and uh and this was like this is kind of my thing you know and and then this <laughs> i i it, it's obviously very scary because you are locked in this perception that you need to to keep this going so then what happens when when your vision ended right mm -hmm. and your vision took place here you 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 won your vision and then you come back and then it, and then israel hosts it so that's another year of your life of this thing being being who you being part of who you are and when all of that hoopla it's a good word i always think when all that what? hoopla was over Hoopla, H O O P L A. <laughs> it is. It's the hoopla of Eurovision. When all of that ended, I mean, obviously, I'm sure there were a lot of plans for you. And this is before Corona. What What were you? What did you want to do with what had just happened? Or were you saying, "I am ready to work on all these other projects that I've been thinking about"? Meaning, how do you How do you find yourself, Netta, the artist? after you've been on this very, very public stage for a, a few years at that point. Yeah. That? At, at first, at the first year, it was like, um, it was kind of like a, a big party with, with, a, with, a <laughs> lot of, with a lot of bullet dodging. Uh, yeah. A lot of like, uh, a lot of crises, a lot of like, you know, Okay, I okay. Besides, bes I am a pop star. What do we do next? This was like right. uh, um, uh, I was trying to, you know, to figure out to find a way. And everybody has an opinion, and everybody has <laughs> their things to say, and uh, and there's no right way to handle this. I I just, you know, I wanted, kind of wanted to let things to kind of cooled down yeah i i liked the noise but i wanted it to be controlled this is my little uh i don't know if it's a defect or or a healthy uh quality i yeah. like things under my control and i like things under my uh circumstances in my art okay. and my scenario that i imagine in my head <laughs> to have it's, hu it's human it's, i think it's and a human this, quality this wasn't a, a, it was a good scenario but it wasn't what i was planning so <laughs> uh, so um it, it, i i i try to grab the wheel uh for the most of the time and yeah uh, Sometimes I, I did good. Sometimes I didn't, and and like gaining control is something that really happened to me in in this period of time in the Corona. Like uh, interesting. Actually stopped, and uh, you have you have like the option to build something new. Mm -hmm. and to do whatever you want this yeah. is when I, this is when i started netta's office i just needed to be tell it to be netta's tell, office netta, tell, tell us what it is i would tell netta's office is uh, an internet series where i sit in my office in my room and i take my electronic devices <laughs> She includes my looper and my 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 auto tune and my uh, right. my my SPD, which is a drum machine. 
and I just, you know, I just vent. <laughs> I just, <laughs> because everything was so, uh, uh, like, they took me out of like, the, the, it's funny, the TV people in Israel, they told, they tell me always, yeah. Out of the gutter, we put you. We we took you out of the, the out of the basements with the rats, and we put you in in shiny gowns. So it was it was so uh, so intense for me that I just needed somewhere, some channel, open channel with my fans, so people can 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 feel what I feel at at yeah. that moment, and I can release something musical because everything was so um like done Planned? Yeah. yeah like overdone uh, uh, uh very uh -huh. glamorous very you know four or five pounds of hair every time uh, <laughs> and like the four or five pounds of lashes and uh and uh i i just needed to feel like a musician <laughs> mm -hmm. So, and I needed my fans. I needed to hear yeah. them. I needed to, to be with them, specific, especially at that time. And, right. uh, and, it, and it was amazing to, to just sit and ask my fans, what do they want to hear? What did they yeah. want to listen to? To take their lyrics and improvise with them. To be, because, yeah. you know, once... I had my bars and, uh, and I could like go down. I, I could like have like four or five or six beers and, and go and have fun on stage. And now you don't have this privilege anymore. And, um, and I just, I just went and, and had fun and I did whatever I wanted. Yeah. Uh, it was amazing for me to do this project. The popular yeah. demand of the fans was like uh, it wasn't it wasn't a complete experience. People were like, "Why don't I have, have this on Spotify? Why don't I have this on Spotify? Why don't I have this on Apple Music?" Okay, so what we did is I decided because this whole project was for fans, was for people to right. listen to me and for people to interact with me and tell me that they're there. Right. I just want to tell them that. They're, they're here, they're, they're with me, and I am uh, releasing everything uh, on Spotify, which is- Oh, great. It's amazing. It's amazing yeah. it's happening right now. And, uh, and, and it's, 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 uh, it's a fucking honor to, to do it. You've also been incredibly productive in these months. I mean, you have a new single out, the times there are changing. People who love car washes, it's just, go it, watch this video. It's actually from Netta's office. Right, right. It came out of Netta's office. That's exactly. That's what I was, I was following that. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's so different in many ways than your previous work, some of your previous work, because we don't actually really see you in, in the, at least in the music video. We, we hear you, obviously. We see your nails a little bit in the beginning. And it is, it is exactly what you spoke about at the beginning of this interview. It is this internal, in the back of the car, the rain, the, the car washed is coming down on the windows. The kid, there's kids in the back and they're gazing out as kids do in a car wash as any of us do. Tell us a little bit about that, about the song and about the experience of making that. I think you made it very quickly. You put it together very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just, you know, it's uh, during the pandemic, uh, it, it, the whole Black Lives Matter came about, and uh, and and the whole thing in Israel with the rallies came about, and and the violence. Let me just say the rallies. This, explain the rallies what you're saying. Against the government and the rallies, you know, uh, people are you know, lost, lost. Yeah. There's no one taking care of them uh, everywhere. Yeah. The leaderships were under collapse. Uh, it was like, it was, it is 
still is uh, a catastrophe. Nobody knows what to do. People are hanging on to old ideas um, instead of embracing the new world, including, you know, including me sometimes. And it feels like we're all going through a stormy cleanse. There's a lot of shit surfacing. And, uh, and my answer and my uh, vision for this cleanse was like a car wash. Mm-hmm. How magical and, and, and like a fairy tale when you get out, when you get in as a kid to this like kind of roller coaster. Yeah. It all feels like a roller coaster. So, so I was thinking about getting three, me and, and, and the, the, the director, Guy Nahum Levy, and my, and my producer, Shalom Ariel, we all, we all were partners in, in, in the script. And we were thinking about um, three kids who represent the world and the naiveness mm-hmm. and the vulnerability of the state that we are in. We are helpless, uh, exactly as those kids going into this car wash with no driver, um, just experiencing the the hit of so-called the pandemic, so the storm. Right. So mm-hmm. they're sitting there and they're they're overwhelmed and they're enjoying and then the water just comes over them and and they just let it happen it's hard it's cold it's yeah. and 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 they let it happen to them we we just like you know the thing about like gaining control and wanting control should come with 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 also you know just accepting and embracing change and this is, for me, the times are changing. This is why I did it. Uh, this, is, uh, this is why I think it's relevant. And this is also why I kept myself out of the video because I think it's bigger than me. Netza Barzilai, it has really been an honor to have you here and to hear your thoughts and get to know you a little bit We really thank you for being with us today. Thank you. Chag Sameach.